I feel like the next two and a half weeks are the playoffs of insider trading for CJ Pierre and Dregs. You guys are playing for keeps right now and so much talk around Calgary. So let's start there. What's the latest on Noah Hannafin, CJ? Well, the Flames have made a concerted effort to sign the pending unrestricted free agent defenseman. And look, they may still have another push to try to get that done. But with a little bit more than two weeks to go before the deadline, it's seeming increasingly likely the 27-year-old defenseman will be moved elsewhere. And he's got some say in the matter. He's got eight teams on a no-trade clause, limited no-trade clause. I'm told that they're not all Canadian teams, that there's maybe an open destination there. But the, the feeling is he's going to end up south of the border because it is believed to be his preference to sign his next contract somewhere in the U.S. And as we look for destinations where he might land, there's a number of teams with interest. But keep your eye on Tampa. They're always the stealth operators at the deadline, and they're believed to be looking at him with Mikhail Sergachev out injured. Look, we know that the Calgary Flames are in selling mode, but the buyers are still waiting for the market to get fully established. And we've talked about a number of the Canadian teams who have already been active, but there are other teams that are sitting and waiting, trying to get going. The Ottawa Senators have made it clear that they're in a position to do something bigger. But Steve Stales has no choice but to wait for the market to establish. What about the Edmonton Oilers? Now, in a perfect scenario, again, we know the Oilers would like to add a forward to help Leon Dreisaitl in the top six, but they're also looking at what Adam Henrique might bring from the Anaheim Ducks as a third-line center. So there are several options that the veteran general manager, Kenny Holland, is looking at in Edmonton as well. Dregs, nothing wrong with a little stall a couple of weeks before Trade Center. The Penguins <laughs> are certainly not where they thought they would be when they went out and got Eric Carlson, nine points out of a playoff spot. Pierre, how does Kyle Dubas handle his first very tricky deadline as Penn's GM? Yeah, you got that right. It is tricky, James. And from talking to people around the league over the last couple of days, Kyle Dubas right now is listening on pretty much everyone on his roster other than his core guys. I hope I, I underline that part for everyone. But that still leaves a lot of players that he's listening on. And, and for example, a player that he's listening on is Riley Smith who's not a pending UFA. He's got another year in his deal at $5 million next year, but he's a cup champion, playoff experience, and I, don't, I know that that may intrigue a few contenders. He's somewhere on their list. So uh, the Penguins will be in sell mode to some degree uh, between now and March 8. And as is the case every single year, fellas, we know this. Defensemen are always a hot commodity. The Dallas Stars seem to be relatively quiet, but this is a team that we're going to have to keep an eye on because without question, they are going to add. They lead the Central Division. They're in it to win a Stanley Cup, and they feel like they're pretty close. They'd like to add an experienced right-shot defenseman. A lot of teams would like to add that. So they're looking at some of the usual suspects. Chris Tanev checks a lot of boxes because the Dallas Stars would also like to add a key penalty killer, and we know that Tanev can provide that. I look at Detroit being in that mix for a defenseman. And the New Jersey Devils, even though they continue to talk on top-level goaltenders, they're kicking tires on D and forwards as well. What about Florida? They snuck up on us last year making that Stanley Cup final. They're not sneaking up on anybody this year. They look every part the contender again this year, but yet they don't come up much in this segment, Pierre. Yeah, it's interesting, James. Arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference, I think, if you talk to a lot of people, and you're right. There's not a lot of trade speculation around them. It's not that they don't want to add. They do. In fact, the Panthers, who will have about $5 million in cap space closer to the trade deadline, would like to add a top nine forward. But they don't have the kind of assets sometimes that you really need at this time of year. For example, they don't have a first-round pick until 2026. They dealt their 25 pick for Matthew Kachuk, their 24 pick for Claude Giroux, and no regrets there, but it just means that they're going to have to be a little more creative to go add, and that's what they plan on trying to do. Arizona is in a free fall again, CJ, but they already have all these draft picks. Usually when you're trading pieces, you're, you're getting future and draft picks. Can, can they get more draft picks when they already have so many? Well, that's the plan, and, and certainly there's a feeling out of Arizona that there can't be too much of a good thing, and, and obviously... They're not happy to have dropped as many games as they have with one win in their last 11 heading into Wednesday's game against Toronto. But, you know, as that for sale sign goes up in Arizona and they're looking at moving pending UFAs like Matt Thumba, Jason Zucker, absolutely the Coyotes would take more draft picks. They've got 20 in total in the first three rounds of the next three drafts, but they would happily add more because they believe that that can give them flexibility down the line when they're trading picks out for players. 20 in the first three rounds in the next three years. They're going to have a draft pick for every seat in Bullet Arena. That's insider trading. 